This video is a review of the symmetry and group theory chapter in the quantum chemistry and spectroscopy playlist. So we start by defining symmetry operators, things that when applied to a molecule with the correct symmetry elements will leave the molecule unchanged. These are things like the identity to do nothing, inversion through a point where you come out the other side of a single point, reflection through a plane where we go to the other side of a mirror plane, rotation around an axis where we rotate a given number of degrees around an axis, 360 over n degrees for a cn axis, and improper rotation where we first rotate around an axis and then reflect through a plane which is perpendicular to that axis. These symmetry operations are associated with symmetry elements, things like the identity, a point of inversion, a plane of reflection, an axis of rotation, or an improper axis of rotation. These symmetry operations combined together obey the properties of what's called a group, where there is some, uh, there's some defined procedure for the product of two operators. That's also a member of the group. They are associative, so doing uh, two together and then the third is the same as doing the first and then the product of the second and third. There is always an identity element, as we see here, which leaves any operation unchanged. And there's an inverse element, which when applied to a given operation will result in the identity. So the type of group that these operations form is called a point group, and it's a concise label for the type of symmetry observed in a given molecule. Things like CO2 have D infinity H, SF6 OH, CH4 TD, H2O C2V, BH3, D3H, and benzene, D6H. Determining the point group for an individual molecule can be done by following the flow chart in that particular video, where you look at the molecule and ask questions like, is it linear? If yes, go over here. If no, go over there. Does it have an inversion center? Eventually ending up at a specific kind of point group label, such as D infinity H. Because these operations form a group, we can show that there are tables of these. Whenever you combine them, they must also be another member of the group and obey all of those kinds of properties. We can do that with group multiplication tables. We show that we can represent individual operators as matrices in 3D Cartesian space. For example, as we did in that video using the operators in the D2H point group. But those representations are what are called reducible. They're not the simplest possible set of representations, which are called irreducible representations. Those things have labels like A or B or E or T. They might have subscripts like 1, 2, or 3, G or U, or superscripts like prime or double prime, where they are the simplest possible representation for a given point group. Those irreducible representations are compiled in what are called character tables, where we show their character or the trace of their matrices under each of the individual symmetry operation classes of the group. Whenever we have <clears throat> a specific molecule or a specific set of objects in the point group, we can determine what's called the reducible representation of those set of objects like atomic orbitals and decompose those into their irreducible representation components. Once we have those, we can also use what are called generating operators to generate orbitals from our individual atomic orbitals, which are molecular orbitals that are compliant with the symmetry properties of the given group. And finally, one of our last applications in this chapter is to look at the vibrational modes of molecules showing how we can find the irreducible representation of our vibrational modes and determine how many of these we expect to find on an infrared or a Raman spectrum as active modes showing peaks in the spectrum. So links to each individual video in the on-screen annotations as well as in the description.